Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now one of the advanced features you find in the C programming language is the idea of pointers. Now a lot of people struggle to understand pointers but once you master them you really can do some very advanced things in this language. So if you want to find out about C and pointers then please let me explain. Okay, so what I'm about to tell you is valid, of course, for standard C. It also works in C++, and it works mainly the same in C Sharp. Now, normally when you have a variable in a C program, let's call it X, and you want to add one to it, the compiler knows to have a place in memory for variable X. It might fetch that value, it can add one to it, and then write it back out into that place in memory. Now, a pointer is a bit different. It's not the variable X, it's a pointer to the variable X. In other words, it holds the address in memory where variable X is stored. Now, once you have the address of where X is stored, you can follow that pointer or dereference that pointer and then manipulate X by, let's say, adding one to it. You can also change the value of the pointer of itself to point to different places in memory. And this is really powerful when you're pointing to an array because you know that in an array, all the different elements are one next to each other. So you can move the pointer from one element to the next element by just moving it along in the memory. So the best way to really get to grips with this is for me to show you an example. So let's go over to my PC where we're going to type in two short C programs that show you the power of using pointers in C. Okay, so here I am on a Raspberry Pi and let's just go into Nano and we're going to write a program called pointer.c and we'll just start with the normal things you need uh, in a uh, C program. So we have an integer main and then we'll go into our program okay so normally if you were in a uh, C program you might have for example like this you might have integer x is equal to 7 and then we might do a printf you know something like x is and then you use percent %d to get the uh, the decimal the number out and then we might print out x Okay, and then of course we could do something like say x is equal to 14 so that we could see it's changing and we could do it again, uh, you know, uh, x is percent %d uh, and then we would know that would program would change. So let's just quickly run that and see what happens. So we can do a gcc pointer.c, so that worked and then we can run the program x is 7 x is 14 exactly what we're expecting but now let us define a pointer to x so the way you do that is you say int because it's a pointer to an int and we say star star tells you it's a pointer a pointer and it's going to be equal to where well the we want it to point to x but how do you do that well you put an ampersand in front of you say the address of x and that tells you that a pointer now points to the address of x. And if we printed out a pointer, we can do that because we're not expecting uh, the address of x. We can so we can here we can say a pointer is. And now I'm going to use percent x because I want the number to come out in hexadecimal, which is a bit easier to read. And so if I now put here a pointer. Okay, we're not going to get the value of x, we're going to get the address where x is stored in memory. So let's just try and compile that. And let's run it. And here you can see a pointer is BE990240. So that's an address in memory where the point where X is actually stored. We didn't know that before. We knew the value of X, we knew it was seven, we knew it changed to 14, but now we know that it's actually stored at this address BE990240. Uh, so let's now continue here. And now what we can do, I just spotted a split say pointer with an E there, but that doesn't really matter. Okay, now what we can do is we can change the value of X by using the pointer. In fact, let's do something, like, let's actually read the value of X before we change the value of X. So we can say uh, X is, and we're gonna do percent %d again. So we're getting the value of X, but now we're gonna use pointer. So we know it points to X, Okay, so how do you actually get that to read the value? You put a star in front of it. So ampersand tells you you want to get the address of, and star tells you you want to follow it or dereference it. So now that should show x is uh, 14. So let us just compile that. 
and run it. And here we get the end. You see X is seven, X is 14. A pointer is the address of the pointer. And now X is 14. Now notice BEA54240, that address is gonna be different every time because you don't know the guaranteed address where it's gonna be when the program actually runs. So let's go back into our editor. And now we can actually change the value uh, of X by actually saying star A pointer. So we're saying the value of dereference it wherever it points to, follow that pointer and change it to 21. So that's what we're gonna do. And now we can do two things. We can say printf uh, X is, and we're gonna do percent %D and then percent %D again. And the reason I'm gonna do that is to show you that one time we can just say X and we're expecting 21. And the other time I'm gonna say star A pointer which means it follows the pointer and gives us the value of it. So let's just compile that and run it. And there we can see X is 21, 21 once by using the value X, and one by using star A pointer, which is dereferencing the pointer to the place where X is, and you also get 21. Okay, now we're gonna do a second program and we're gonna call this array pointer.c. And again, we just quickly go in and do what we need for C. So we need a main function. Okay, so what we're gonna do this time is show you how you can do some pointer arithmetic. So let's say we have an array of numbers, some numbers, and it's five long. So that's a standard C array of some numbers. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pointer. So we put a star, okay, and we're gonna call it, we want it to point to some numbers. Now, the interesting thing is in C, an array name is a pointer to itself. Now, that would be the equivalent of doing ampersand some numbers zero. Now, you don't need to do that because an array name is actually a pointer to itself. So we now have a pointer which points to the beginning of the array. And now I'm going to use a variable V because I want to fill this array with something. So I need something to have some values in it. So what we're going to do now is this. We're going to say have a four. We don't need to initialize anything because the pointer is already pointing to the beginning of the array. And we say keep going while pointer is less than some numbers five. Now remember the array goes from zero to zero, one, two, three, four. So while it's less than the five, and of course we need an ampersand in front of that because it's the address of of that. So while the pointer has not yet reached the address of what would be element five, which of course doesn't exist. Now here's the trick bit, pointer plus plus, you can increment the pointer. And what that means is the pointer will move on to the next element in the array. And the great thing is, is it does it exactly by the array size. So if you did characters, it would be different. It would move a different amount. If you did num integers, if you did long, it knows exactly how far to move along. And now we can say star pointer, follow the pointer and set it to V. So in this case, the first time around it will set it to two. And then just to give us a different value each time, I'm gonna say V is equal to V, time, v times two, just to, just to change it. And that's it. And now that will fill the array with 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. And then to check that it's done that, we can now do this the more traditional way. We can start with i, and we can say 4, i is equal to 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus, your standard kind of way of going around an array. And we can just say printf, uh, uh, percent %d, backslash n to get the carriage line, and then we're going to say, some numbers i. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, print out those different parts of the array and a closing bracket there. Let's see whether this compiles GCC array pointer. Yes, it did. And now let's run it 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So they're being printed out using the traditional way of going through an array index zero, index one, index two, and we filled it up by using pointers and moving the pointers along the array. So there we have pointers in the array and we actually have the traditional way. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Now, if you do like programming videos, I highly recommend going over to digitacademy.com because over there I have a programming course that you can sign up for, which deals with Java and Android app development. So if you wanna learn how to do Android app development, if you want me to teach you how to do Android app development, go over to digitacademy.com and I'll see you over there. Well, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. 
You know what I'm going to ask you, please subscribe, please share this on social media, and please feel free to use the comments below to ask me any questions you have about pointers, and I'll try my best to help you. Okay, well, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.